I think Trump is going to win. I, I'm sorry. You know what? I, yeah. Boo if you want. I am glad you're saying that. Everybody I should say, say that. No, no. The, the, the enemy is complacency. Yeah. But he certainly in, could win. I live in and, Michigan. Let me tell you. Let me right. tell you. But what he's, no. this, he's gonna, it's gonna be the Brexit strategy. The, the middle of England is Michigan, Wisconsin, right. Ohio, and Pennsylvania. And Mitt Romney lost by 64 electoral votes. Total electoral votes of those four states in the Rust Belt, 64. Yeah. All he has to do is win yeah. those four states. And I'm telling you, I was there during the Michigan primary, and he went there in front of the Ford, and he said, I'm telling you right now, they moved this factory to Mexico. I'm right. putting the right. tariff but on the cars, and that's it. And it was music to people's ears, and more people in Michigan in the Michigan sure, sure. primary Perfect. voted Republican than Democrat <laughs> in, the, in the primary this year. And folks, we are back live. So many great people here, so many big interviews. We've got stacked up that we've already taped when I confronted Charlie Rose. Uh, I talked to Don King last night, and we've got so much coming up. But this is live in studio. Marco Gutierrez and Marco Leo, official Latinos for Trump.com. Talk about amazing folks. Uh, and, uh, you know, coming here legally um, is what Mr. Gutierrez did, becoming a citizen. That's what Trump's always said, is that it's so hard to become a citizen because the Democrats and Republicans want a bunch of undocumented people that they can basically use and basically drive down the wages with. So we're not the enemies of all these undocumented illegals that are here. They're just being used as a weapon against everybody. And then if the U.S. collapses into a third world country, there's nowhere to go. Uh, I mean, this is this is this is what Ross Perot exposed. He said they're paid twenty five dollars an hour, thirty dollars an hour in Canada. We're paid eighteen dollars an hour here. As soon as we opened up to Canada, theirs all went down. Now we do it to Mexico. It, we're going to go down. It happened, yeah. and so it's stupid. I mean, we need to be using our jobs industry here to actually build up deals with Mexico, not the other way around, just imploding all of our nations. So official Latinos for Trump dot com guys, tell us your story. Tell us about what you've been through supporting Trump where you see all this going and why you've decided to support Trump. But first, tell us your story. You were telling me your personal story. Well, my, my name is Marco Gutierrez, and uh, I was born and raised in Mexico. And I came to this country uh, in 1991. My parents uh, were granted uh, amnesty uh, in the Reagan administration. So I applied, they applied, they petitioned for us, and I was there with... Four years without my parents, I stayed in Mexico while we got, we got approved. Sure. Just got scoot approved. a little bit. I'm sorry, I said scoot down. That we got approved. I came, and um, uh, I have had the opportunity to, to integrate into this culture, um, and it hasn't been easy. And I, I see a lot of people that are having a hard time, that they, they come here and they stay in the middle. And, and they, uh, they live in a subculture environment where they don't feel the urgency or the need to become a, a citizen, and uh, they okay. cash their checks at the Mexican market. <laughs> they uh, go to church in Spanish, so they, they they don't feel that need. And Mexico is a, a country under development, underdeveloped country. So the third world mentality, it's we bring that with us, and I think that's what Donald Trump's talking about. We we have problems. We're bringing we're bringing problems, but. As you integrate in the culture and you understand, uh, then you start seeing the rules and you start um, getting the idea of what it is to be an American. I came here to be an American. I, I didn't come here to continue to be a Mexican. And that attitude that you have in San Jose about the flag and La, Ra La Raza is the ones that have been pushing things on the Hispanics that is not right. You know, the, the white man with blue eyes is the devil. And when you tell that to kids, and the false, the false pride that comes with that, and they're trying to defend a, Mex a Mexico that doesn't exist. That Mexico they're defending here is a Mexico of 150 years ago. And there's a lot of unresolved pain that they keep cultivating when, when this is different times. Different well, I mean, look, it's Ford Foundation. There's beefs on both sides. Everybody's done bad stuff. But it's Ford Foundation weaponized garbage to make us all fight to keep people in a subculture, as you said, control of the Democratic Party. So, I mean, I wouldn't even be against even more massive immigration because, quite frankly, a lot of Americans have gotten lazy and I don't care what color they are. But, but, but the issue is, the issue is that they get here, I don't care whether they're from China or Europe or wherever, they're indoctrinated with socialist brainwashing and hate America garbage to bring the country down. And I'm sorry, that you know that's my issue. And so that's why it's so great, because I see these stereotypes that Hispanics are all communists or socialists. I'm, I find them the most patriotic white people out there. Same thing with black folks. 
We have rallies where it's like almost all blacks and Hispanics and not even white people. They actually care about freedom. And I'm not trying to be patronizing or, or you know, uh, virtue signal. It's a fact. It's what we're seeing. So what I'm saying is, from what the real people believe and stand for and what the media claims people stand for is two different things. So, so we, what do you think the demographics are? How many folks, let's say from Mexico, do you think kind of halfway understand what's going on or are they just kind of kept in their barrio? You have what's called a lot of uh, Donald Trump supporters that are in the closet and they're afraid to come and say it publicly because of the violent criticism of the left. Uh, you have the, I wish there was uh, two or three Alex Jones in Spanish. Maybe I can, we need uh, maybe it. No, I, I can make one. We want to launch a whole Spanish division. That's not the money or the, we're looking. In fact, that's a plan. I am so uh, against Jorge Ramos, George Lopez. I do videos uh, just. I know, the, the be, Because these guys, they, they. I should add, you reach millions of people. You're, yeah. They exploit their, 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 their heritage just to enrich themselves. And they're into hurting all these kids by continuing that, that nonsense that uh, it just. Thus, it's not conducive. Uh, it, I think that they're interfering in the uh, integration, uh, cultural integration of thousands of millions of people. And creating division. Exactly. Because let's be honest, it's not just La Raza and teaching hate and stuff. It's causing a backlash on the other side. It's very distasteful. Yeah. And, and the media, and I was trying to talk to CNN and Uni, Univision yesterday, 90% it's just uh, socialist uh, mambo jumbo. Yeah. Uh, and, and a lot of Latinos are really pro-capitalism. A lot of Latinos are pro-capitalism at heart. Uh, you, you see the guys that are cutting people's yards. They're, you got guys that are selling ice cream, you know, at the corner and they have fruit stands and, you know, they're... Old-fashioned common old sense hard work. Uh, yeah, they're not relying and, 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 on the and, government. And mom and dad and family, the opposite of what the socialists... Yep. That's what, I mean, how could they sell, especially the Hispanics who are like the most pro-family people out there, how, could, how are they trying to sell socialism to them and, 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 and anti-family? It doesn't work. I mean, we, we like taco truck. We like the tamales. We sell. Uh, we we like trade. And and, and uh, when the Spain the Spanish uh, conquered Mexico, they wrote back to Queen Elizabeth and they said, "Hey, we found this place with riches where there's trade compared to the Chinas." Yeah. And uh, still to this day, that's that's what we like. We don't like free lunch. We like to work. But you've for always them. had. We've uh, just like we've had in the U.S. colonialism. And so it'd be great to see colonialism. Now we have this corporate colonialism, this socialist colonialism. Finally, get rid of it. Sorry. Oh, but uh, yeah, um, yeah. But Latinos are definitely, you know, commun uh, not communists, but they're definitely, uh, you know, capitalists at heart. And you know, some of them in the, wherever they came from, they uh, they they've been in their countries, you know, brought into the more um, communistic, socialistic you know, styles of living, they get here and they see, you know, you know, this brand of car or that house or whatever, and they have this entitlement feeling that, hey, I should have that car and I should have that and I should have a free education. And, and a lot of times they do. And, and, you know, I was talking to other, uh, you know, uh, minorities and, you know, some of them are supporting Donald Trump because, you know, because the Latinos have embedded themselves into the, uh, you know, into the government as well, you know, running the, uh, the you know, HUD homes. Uh, and that's why, you know, they're upset because, hey, you have to be a Latino just to get a Section 8 house. But if you're, if you're not Latino, then, uh, so, and that's actually bringing so, in so, like so a black So the truth vote. is every group in history does this entitlement business yes. and does this inside, uh, you know, privilege thing. Instead of just making our culture be about the Bill of Rights, Constitution, free market, family, Correct. no matter what color we are, where we came from, we believe in the prosperity of an open free society. But mm -hmm. we can't bring folks in who are going to be weaponized against that free society, and that's happening. Well, yeah. one, one thing that um, in, uh, in 1986, 4 million uh, Reagan uh, granted four million people uh, passage here to be yeah. legalized, to get legalized here. That includes uh, my stepfather, by the way. Out of those four million, I'm probably the only one that's in the convention today. Where are those people? They should be jumping up and down, uh, registered Republican to pay back that they're able to be here, but they're not. So we did something wrong then. And a lot of people tell me, well, if you're Mexican, you came here to amnesty, why are you against uh, these people getting legalized? Different times, different problems, and different solutions. Well, the thing is, the Republicans did that, and the Democrats are so good at race baiting, it doesn't matter what they do, it just gets worse and worse. 
where you're being called all these names no matter what you do, and, and then yeah. at a certain point you're they, like... They call us a racist, and it's... Yeah, like, so what is that like? Because, you know... Oh, it's it's terrible. Um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm white. You know, my parents, they come from Mexico. Uh, they came here legally. They needed the... Uh, the, the, the math knowledge for my dad, you know, and he worked on the space program. Um, but uh, so he, he came over here legally and, you know, his parents, you know, descended from Spain. And so the Mexicans, they're like, oh, he's American already. So they didn't want me. The, uh, the blacks, I'm obviously not black. And, you know, the whites, I, they didn't assimilate me because, you know, I'm an ESL person. You know, I didn't learn English until six years old. So I had a lot of racism thrown at me oh, that for all, from all up, sides from all sides that's me i mean i <laughs> i mean i i love black folks uh, but i mean some of them are really racist and, 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 and aggressive i grew up in dallas and i've been attacked i mean a lot i mean i mean they've been a movie just of that people wouldn't believe it and that i don't have some chip on my shoulder against random black people who mm -hmm. are great folks but you know it's like they, they act like only a minority can go through racism but you're saying you were getting it from all sides from whites all hispanics sides. blacks everybody yep. so i mean well that's people are tribal you know, you're not in their group, you're not in the club. Yeah, so that's that's actually helped me become who I am, you know, a stronger individual. I agree. The stuff I went through made me stronger. It didn't make me a victim. Nope, it didn't. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been prosperous in my life, and, you know, um, I'm, you know, whether, you know, good or bad, I'm, I'm going to land okay because... I have a good head on my on my shoulders, and uh, you know I have strong feet. And you're independent. Imagine I'm in a, very independent. Uh, imagine the enslavement of actually believing you can only get ahead with the government. Communist countries can't even build cars. No, that's they, they never even have enough food. Look at Cuba. I mean, take the Russians. Those are probably one of the highest IQ groups out there statistically. Some I mean, engineers, scientists, you know, oh, yeah. art, music, you name it. Under communism, they couldn't even hardly produce automobiles or enough food. I mean, Right. It's ridiculous. And now they just released a uh, an airplane that that rivals the 737, the MC21. Just Absolutely. Came out of, yeah, and it's got anti-suicide pilot technology written into it. It's already can be flown as a drone, but they they're not getting that certified yet. That's right. Well, I mean, the point is, is you, no matter who you take. They took black folks and put them under government control, out of one evil into another, and totally destroyed their family in 30 years. Blacks had lower illegitimacy than whites oh, oh, yeah. in the 40s and 50s. Now it's it, the worst in the world. Yeah, that, yeah. you put Russians under government, they're done. You put blacks under government, they're done. You take anybody, put them under government, they're done. They're done. Yep. I mean, you put them under socialism, they, it's over. They overregulate everything. Well, yeah, because you never get a chance to actually live or, or, or try and fail. Oh, kids, we can't, everybody has to get an A+, plus, so there's no more grades. Or we can't have dodgeball. Or we can't have trophies because everybody's got to get one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. If everybody's a winner, then everybody's on the same level. Nobody gets ahead. But a lot of people get left behind. Absolutely. And, and of course, there's always the few winners in the government system who they want to get in the little places of power. Uh, but it's crazy. And, and again, I'm not even saying the government itself is evil. I'm saying a big, overreaching, giant government. But I tell you guys, what type of uh, response have you got when you say folks are closeted? Because that's what I find, is that I think Trump's going to win a landslide. Most people I talk to who are white, black, Hispanic, most folks I know, a lot of folks are mixed, whatever you call it, just humans. They're supporting Trump. You know how liberal trendies are, but they're scared to say it. There was this, I was at a, at a grocery store, and, you know, I was uh, getting signatures for Trump, and, um, you know, this lady who didn't speak a lick of English, she starts speaking to me in Spanish, and, and she basically is like, yeah, I'm a Trump supporter, doesn't speak English, is registered to vote. But she says that the Democrats really have, you know, allowed uh, demonic forces into their party. I think people are getting it. Carson said it's the devil. He, uh, Hillary's mentor pledged himself to Lucifer. Yep. And she, and she pointed out that... The <clears throat> There's a problem ahead. that I want to talk to you about. Now... Talking about the problems that we as underdeveloped um, culture bring, the, the number one epidemic in the Hispanic community right now is domestic violence. Uh, a lot of these people get deported because they haven't got their citizenship. So what you have here is it, it costs about $50,000 to deport somebody without any legal entanglements around it. Gosh. Now, you deport the person, now the family goes in assistance. That's about another $50,000 because it, it'll take about a year for the guy to get enough money to come back. So now you have $100,000 on somebody that's not doing what he's supposed to do. That's not abiding by the rules of the land. Yeah. So these people need to uh, either they, they need to either integrate 
or they need to find a, a, a no, I agree. We need to we need to just vet people and if they have skills and if they have a good record, just and and, and, and I'm sorry, you have people in the citizenship test, they're patriots, you know, they at least are Americana. Uh, and see, that sounds wrong to me to say they've got to have a political pro-America view, but then I realize instead they're giving them a globalist communist view. So I'm saying don't indoctrinate people, but then they're going to do it anyway. So how do you counter that? Well, something that your uh, guest before was saying is I have, w when you get your citizenship, you actually have an oath where you have an oath to uphold the Constitution and an oath to, to go against uh, domestic and foreign terrorists. So I guess becoming a citizen really is you agree to be at least, at least swear to this indoctrination. I mean, it's not, I mean, that's it. You're joining this crew. You're joining this club. We want free market, religious freedom. We're going to do all this. Why, why wouldn't you want to yeah. say that place to that? Yeah. To answer your question, how do you counter that? You know, I look at the uh, the whole Soviet Union when they went to Glasnost, and that's what people need is Glasnost, freedom, deregulation, empowerment, and that's how you counter it. And right now, it's, it's a tough job to, to try to get to that point. Um, you know, even, even on the uh, platform, I read the entire thing. There's a lot of wonderful stuff, and then there's some stuff that's, it's not just regulation, but it's over-regulation. That's right, over-regulation. It's all sorts of garbage, because all these special interests can come in, they can buy off the government, and then basically have their industry protected. And that's really, the, and now they want to just shut down free speech. You know, this uh, Milo guy's about to be here, you know, tens of millions of Twitter followers until now, banned. Tech company guy sells it, he happens to be, you know, gay or whatever. And he criticizes feminism, and now they've said you're banned for life because that's hateful. I mean, nobody's safe. This is the they have a coup at Fox News right now. I mean, they're making their move because they know America and the world is waking up. Gentlemen, stay with us. We're going to come back. What's the best website for folks to visit? Uh, official, official Latinos for Trump .com. Official Latinos for Trump .com. Uh, These gentlemen are reaching tens of millions of people a week. It is amazing. They are incredible info warriors. Stay with us. Uh, we got six minutes left, uh, Marco Gutierrez and crew here, uh, also Marco. You got the floor. Other key things you've seen, what you've seen here, what's coming up. You're telling me about the parties with the delegates, you know, other interesting things. You witnessed, you told me about splits in families. Uh, you know, uh, you, you, you said you have friends and family where the wife threatens to leave the husband. We votes Trump. I mean, this is crazy. Well, I, I talk about integration a lot because... Uh, we, I came here with a dream, an uh, American dream, and, and I, have, I have had actually a very successful story because I, I became a millionaire in um, 2007. Uh, I went bankrupt and I lost everything. <laughs> and then I see that if you really want to, you, you, this land is the land of opportunity. I mean, it, it, it just- And let me guess, I bet you've already built it back up. It's, it's, I'm, I'm getting there. But this Where time, else can you do that? <laughs> Nowhere else but the USA. <laughs> but not anymore if they keep doing this. Yes. There is a lot of people out there that are, they are angry of people that are successful. And I, I think that's why I'm so angry about Donald Trump. Um, my culture is divided uh, because they, being an immigrant is not easy. You know, you, you, it's like you get transplanted and you know, your idea. And you get pissed better. on some, that happens to everybody. Uh, yeah. Uh, but there is a point where you have to have integrity, you know, and, and you are here and this is, this is the land, this is the flag we have allegiance to. And uh, the, the, what I'm feeling from, from look, at I'm talking, America's being great for me again now. <laughs> I'm talking to Alex Jones. Uh, I, I was at the floor with a Latinos for Trump sign. And I think that that's going to give permission to a lot of Hispanics to say, well, I can do that too. And it's okay. It's okay to support Donald Trump. That's and and it's, it's okay to be open about it, too. That's that's Well, key. look, I, I, I want to believe in Trump, but I know this. Hillary is pure evil. There's no choice here. What did you think of Ted Cruz? I used to really admire him saying he'd vote for Trump, pledging, and then flip-flopping on there. I really feel sorry for him. I'm oh, I was totally ready with the Latinos for Trump sign down on the floor. You know, all Latinos unite. All the, the Latinos unite with, uh, with Donald Trump. And uh, I was expecting that, and you know, he was saying a lot of great things, you know. And he slipped it in there. And then he, yeah, vote your conscience, and, and which, 
To some degree, yeah, I guess. But, but up and down, the I mean, all the votes are for Hillary if you don't vote for Trump. <laughs> exactly. The others, it's like, look at others. I'm like, you should have just said vote for Hillary. He said it was all Steve. Oh, and the up and it's the same thing Lynn Beck said. That PR firm wrote that. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, where's the olive branch? Where's the, the um, you know, the, the endorsement that he said that he would do? You know, this morning I was watching a sucker punch. Yeah, this morning I was watching the coverage and, you know, he addressed the Texas delegation and they said, we came here as delegates for Cruz and we're leaving delegates for Trump. And wow. that, so it backfired on him. But I told folks they were going to walk out Wednesday and Cruz's speech yeah. didn't happen. We told everybody that was coming. Tell them what your dad said. Oh, my dad told me yeah. something about in staying in Mexico uh, that some people, they like to uh, burn their house just to see your scotch fire. Yeah, say it again. Uh, some people burn their houses just to see your house catch on fire. Exactly. And I think so he cut his nose off and spit his face. Yeah. Yep. So he burned himself up hoping it would get Trump. Yes, yep. I think that's exactly. what he did. Yep. And you know, uh, he's Hispanic, and I'm going back to something. I have tried to not think with the color of my skin because that's what the left is teaching everybody. I, I've tried. And then it makes the right start doing it too. But you were mentioning his wife and all these immigrants they marry and the Trump and how they hire all these minorities. The Trump, a lot of people, lot of people that know Trump, he loves everybody. Well, I never supported uh, Cruz or Rubio. I, I, I support Trump because he has, uh, I think that the, the, somebody, the Vicente Fox, the former president of Mexico was saying that, that Donald Trump was the false prophet. And I did a video against him and say, you know, Listen, brother, we're going to have you back okay. up next week. God bless you. we got Milo coming up. Thank All you very right. much. Thank you very much for having us. Great job, guys. This is their website. Website. Official Latinos for Trump.com. Yeah. My fellow Info Warriors, I am very excited to be able to announce to you the introduction at InfoWarsLife.com of a new way to save time and money when you stock up on InfoWars Life formulations like Survival Shield X2 and Super Male Vitality. Just go to InfoWarsLife.com today, select your favorite product, click on Auto Ship before adding to cart, and choose how often you want us to send you another order. Every time you choose Auto Ship at InfoWarsLife.com, you get 10% off and you you won't have to worry about running out and having to reorder next time. And of course, you can cancel with one click anytime. As you know, I'm all about the idea of a 360 win. And the new auto ship feature at InfoWarsLife.com is a sure win for everybody. A win for liberty, a win for health, and a win when it comes to big savings. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today and save 10% on your next InfoWars Life order by selecting auto ship at checkout. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139.